So January 1st is officially two days away and I just saw the first post that I know more are coming of someone stating new year, new me, and now they're talking about their goals. So I figured I'd make a video basically talking about how I go about planning my entire year and breaking it down and then how I set goals in all areas that I feel are important to living a balanced life and those areas are health, financial, educational, relationship, spiritual, and then personal goals. So let's get into it. Alright, so if you guys are like me, you guys are probably very excited that you got a new year and you got an opportunity to improve on last year. And obviously this is a health related channel, mindset, physical, um, and all areas. So I figured I would kind of touch on some different challenges because a lot of, I've seen that word a lot going around on social media, 30 day challenge, new year challenge, everybody's on sale, everybody's trying to get someone involved in a challenge. Um, certain challenges that I've looked into that I've also been asked, have I completed them? Um, I've seen a lot of people ask about the 75 hard, and I'll talk about that. I've seen people do a 30-day blitz. I've seen people do uh, Jocko Willicks doing a DEF CON reset kind of thing, basically resetting yourself physically and mentally. All of them are great, great programs, and they all have basically geared towards the same thing. It's a new year, so let's improve your health, improve your life in a health standpoint, and then obviously a physical standpoint. And I like certain things about them. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is the 75 hard challenge. I have never done that personally. Um, actually, the first time I was asked about it, I was at a birthday party and someone said, hey, have you ever done the 75 hard challenge? I didn't hear about it, but one of my buddies was like, he pretty much does that every single day. And I was like, well, what is it? And they explained it to me. And I'll go into the details about that because I'm gonna basically tell you guys how you can set up your own 30 day challenge so you can take ownership for it. Um, but he explained to me, he, he went through all the list of what it was, and I was like, yeah, I pretty much do those, but there's certain aspects that I don't do, and therefore, I would fail that challenge. Which brings me to the only issue I have with 75 hard challenge. Like I said, I've known people that have had success with it, and they've basically drastically changed their, their lifestyle just because of doing that challenge, but then I know a lot more people that have done it and not completed it, and then almost felt like bad for themselves and beat themselves up. And I don't, I, that, that's my issue with this program. So I took aspects of it, don't get me wrong. I like the 75 hard challenge. However, I don't think that it's a way to set up a lifestyle. I think it's, a, it's kind of almost like doing a bodybuilding show. A lot of people will do a bodybuilding show. They'll go all out for 12 weeks. And then after that, it's like they could say, I did it. Now, if that's your goal, then yeah, I would say do something that it's like you could say, I did it. But my goal for 2024 and every single year, and I think it should be your goal too, is at the end of the challenge, it's not like you did it, it's I'm doing it. Meaning all the things that you wanted to incorporate and improve certain habits that would benefit you physically and emotionally, now they're instilled in you. 75 hard, I don't think anybody can actually do that forever, which means if you've done it, you're gonna say I've done it, that multiple times it is what it is, but you're not doing it. And that's my goal with 2024 is to instill habits within the first 30 days that now you're doing that for the rest of the year because they are maintainable. A lot of these diets, like a 12 week program that's gonna go into a bodybuilding show, it's not maintainable because the last two weeks are you're like in a, a calorie deficit where you're not able to function. 75 hard, I don't think it's maintainable if you're trying to live a balanced life socially, relationship-wise, and, and honestly, just a, from a mentality standpoint. I don't think it's maintainable. What we're gonna be talking about is we're gonna be talking about the 30-day full send. Because if you're gonna do something, you gotta send it. That's just my motto, you gotta go all in 100%. So we're gonna take aspects of the 75 hard, because like I said, there's key points of that that I like that I kinda, I put on my, my I, I changed, and now I'm taking ownership of. So. I want you guys, I got my, literally, my, my notebook with all my goals and everything. First thing you should do, and I don't know if you can see it, okay? No, you can't see it. I'm not gonna show you. I'm not gonna show you my goals. These are my goals. Anyway, 
I would put get a sheet of paper, put health at the top, right? These are all my areas. If there's a certain area that you feel like you need to you know, improve on, then add that on there. But these are, out of all the books I've read, they all kind of touch on the same base. So health, you need to have health goals. Obviously, nutrition, fitness, uh, it could be sleep, it could be anything that's related to health. So I'd put a health box, and then you'd have uh, a relationship box. Relationship is like, for me, obviously, I have a relationship with my, my, my wife, my daughter, my family members. So like certain goals that would be under fall under that relationship. And then I'm gonna do spiritual. And again, you don't have to be religious for this. Obviously, I am religious, but if you're not religious, this could be something of like, you know, meditating or just kind of finding stuff about yourself. So that'd be spiritual. Or if you don't want spiritual, take it out. It's your goals, you do whatever you want for 2024. Next one is financial. So like, do you wanna save money? Do you wanna make more money? Do you wanna go places? That's financial. Educational, like this would be like the personal development but like area. Like, do you wanna read more? Do you wanna get better? Um, for instance, if you're trying to grow a business, advertising, do you want to learn a new trade? Do you, if, would you get a raise if you learned you know, Spanish? So that's all educational. Social is something that if like you're, I don't have any social goals this year. Social, again, this is not saying like there's not areas I need to improve on, obviously there is, but it's not like a focus. But if socially, if you're like, hey, I need to get out more and meet more people, that way it could re lead to a relationship, then you might want to have social, but I'm not having social this year. And then last is personal. Personal is, again, these are certain issues and maybe stuff that no one else knows that you struggle with personally, um, ways that you can improve. So what you do is you list all those areas. And then what I like to do is I set a five-minute timer, okay? Five-minute timer where you just set it and you just go. Don't overthink it. Just get pen and start writing. Write down everything. This is not finalizing your goals for the year. This is literally just getting your thoughts out onto paper. So throw everything out out there. This is not like where we, this is the rough draft version. But what I don't want you to do, and I see a lot of people do it, is they'll go to write something down and then this little voice of average comes in and tells them, hey, don't write that. Or you can't accomplish that. Or you can't, no, 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 no. It's like a genie. Just act like anything you put on this piece of paper is gonna come real. Just have fun with it. Don't listen to the voice of average telling you, don't put that down. You did that. You tried to do that last year. It didn't work. You're going to fail. Don't listen to it. Just write it down. So set a timer and then fill in all areas of that. And the reason why I like section them off because I don't want to just go to health and try to write all my health. If I get, if I'm like, okay, I don't really have a health one. Boom. I'm jumping over at educational. And then I start writing down some educational, but then that might trigger like, oh, you know what? I want to work on my relationship. And then I jump over. So I just like to keep them organized, but at the same time, just set a timer of five minutes. Think of every goal you want to accomplish. I'll read off a couple of mine just to kind of give you an idea. So like weigh 195, bench 300, squat 300, buy an assault bike, buy ski, buy tires for my truck, read 25 books, um, improve marketing for my, my social media, personal, understand that not everyone will like you and that's okay. Relationship, read the Adeline every night, date night once a month. Spiritual, read Bible every day, three religious books, pray every night and every morning. So again, these are my like, just a little bit, I'm not reading all of them, but some things I wanna focus on. Five minutes, go. All right, so now that you got your five minutes, and hopefully you did that. If you didn't do that, then you are the average person and you shouldn't be watching this channel because this is all about not being average. If you didn't and now you feel guilty, go back, set a timer, and five. Now that you have your goals, okay, now you, hopefully you just, it, it looks like chicken scratch because nothing's finalized. You just threw it all out there. Now we're gonna jump into what I'm gonna be doing, which is the 30 day um, full send. So 75 hard, it says you gotta follow a diet with no cheat meals. I do not like that because life happens. And if, I don't know, you might have a birthday in January. I got no birthdays in January, so I'm good on that aspect. And this is my issue if I did 75 hard. If I had to follow a diet and say I had no cheat meals, right? And I say, hey, I'm gonna do it for the next 75 days. I got my race on the 27th and on the 28th that I plan on cheating after those meal, after those, those days, which if I did 75 hard, I'm gonna lose in 27 days. And that's again, not really a lifestyle. So my thing is, is instead of following a diet with no cheat meals, find a diet whether you go paleo, carnivore, whatever, find a diet and then stick to it. So me personally, my diet, as of right now, Monday, Tuesday, low carb day. Wednesday, high carb day. 
Thursday, Friday, low carb day. Saturday, high carb day. Sunday, cheat day, okay? I'm throwing in a cheat day, okay? Now, there's still some structure to that though because does that mean I can have a cheat meal on Wednesday? No, because my diet allows me to have a cheat meal on Sunday. Now, if you are just starting out on this, and again, you're trying to instill habits. I hope you're creating your home. I hope you're not stealing mine. Because again, I, my, I'm gonna be at a different area than you are. So if you've never followed a diet, I would follow a diet that allows maybe like three cheat meals a week, right? And some people are like, well, we're not gonna see results with that. No, 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 again, we're trying to build habits. We're trying to build that when you say you're gonna do something, you do it. So you don't wanna go all extreme one way where it's like you know deep down inside mentally you're probably gonna fail. If I'm going, hey, every Sunday is my cheat day, that means basically six days a week I gotta have discipline. Now, if you are someone who doesn't have that much discipline, but you say, hey, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday night, I'm gonna do cheat meal, a, a cheat meal, right? Well, that means you still have to develop Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Those days, I'm sure, if you've never you know, followed a diet, you're gonna be craving something. But if you can instill, hey, no, I, tomorrow I get a cheat meal, and you stick to that, you are building the habit of when you say you're gonna do something, you follow through. You're building the habit of willpower. The next thing, two 45 minute workouts, one of them must be outside. I have an issue with this. One, there is a thing called overtraining. Now I know one of the workouts could just be a 45 minute walk outside, which I know that is like super beneficial. This is my issue with that though. If you miss a day, you have to reset the entire thing. What happens if like, I don't know, someone goes to the hospital or something like that and you miss a day. Now you have that mindset of like, oh, I, you know, I missed a day and I'm a failure and I've talked to people personally that have done 75 hard and they've had a legitimate excuse and I'm not gonna say excuse, a legitimate reason of why they weren't able to complete it. Like meaning, oh, something came up tragic that they weren't able to take the, um, the progress pick that day. And I'm like, you didn't take a progress pick? And they're like, yeah, so I had to restart. And I'm like, okay, see, I don't think mentally that's good for you. Because not only are you dealing with whatever life is throwing at you, it could be a family emergency or something, but now you're beating yourself up of having to start over. And mind you, you see yourself as a failure. I don't care who you are. You set a goal, you didn't follow through, therefore you're a failure. That's why I don't agree with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have six workouts a week. Right? So my off day is going to be, I think it's Monday. I think Mondays are going to be my rest day, right? So that means I have to work out Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Again, this is easy for me because I've been doing it for a very long time. If you've never worked out, but you want to start incorporating workouts, then I would say you work out three days a week. Choose those three days, okay? Say you want to work out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, okay? But your overall goal is three workouts for the week, which means if you start working out Monday, boom, you hit one day, golden. You take a rest day Tuesday, which is good because you're super sore. Wednesday, you're supposed to work out again because that's your day, right? But you're super sore and you say, I I today's just not gonna work, okay? My backup is you have to hit three days a week, which means if you don't work out Wednesday, you better get your butt in Thursday. Now say you get in Thursday, but you're like, you kill it. You're super pumped up, you're, you're fired up. And you're supposed to work out Friday. But now you're sore from Thursday and you're like, dude, Friday, I just can't do it. And this happens for people who have never worked out before. So Friday, you're like, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm too sore. You could take Friday off because your, your secondary plan is you have to hit three workouts for the entire week. Did you hit your goal of Monday, Wednesday, and Friday? Absolutely not. Life happened. But you best believe you better get your butt in the gym on Saturday because then you hit your goal for the week of I wanted to work out three times a week. So does that make sense? So if your goal is I want to work out four days a week, choose the four days and st stick to them. If life happens, you got to have basically like a contingency plan. I think that's what, the way you would use that. As, as long as I hit four workouts for the week, I'm solid. And I think mentally that is a good way of still building that if I say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it, no matter if life happens.
because life's going to happen. So if you have a setback, if you have an injury, if you have to deal with stuff from work, no big deal. But you better hit your three workouts for the week if your goal is three workouts. Now, six days a week, I don't really have any leverage. So I got to kind of be careful. But for instance, if I'm, I'm feeling good Monday and I know for instance something's going to happen on Thursday and I'm going to be out of town, I'm not going to be able to work out. I'm going to work out Monday and I'm going to switch my workout to Thursday or my off day to Thursday. Does that mean I failed the 30-day full send? Absolutely not. Because my days, I have my days set that I want to work out and then I have my total amount of workouts I want to hit for the week. That's, I think, a foolproof, full, foolproof? Yeah, full, foolproof plan in order to hit the workout section that we're going to be taking. So you got the diet, you got the workouts. Um, progress pick. I'm a firm believer. I don't think you should take it every single day, but I do think you should weigh yourself every day. And there's a reason for that. So you're getting into the habit of paying attention to the scale, but you don't buy into the scale because you're weighing yourself every day with the goal of taking the average weight for the entire week. And the reason why is because you'll see, do it for a week, weigh yourself every single morning and your weight's going to go like this. So the reason why I have an issue with people, oh, I weigh myself every Sunday. What happens if you had a, a busy night Saturday and you ate a bunch or you didn't eat a bunch on Saturday and now your weight's all, I, I don't like that. I used to be like that. I don't like that. So instead of a progress pick every day, I'm going to weigh myself every single day and then I'm going to average those weights, my average weight from the seven days, every Sunday and I'm going to take a progress pick every Sunday because I think a progress pick every week will give you a, a, a good reading of, again, how you're looking physically. Weigh myself at the same time every single day. That, that's a must. You have to weigh yourself every single time or every single day at the same time, I recommend first thing in the morning. So you wake up, you weigh yourself, you're good to go. And then on Sundays, that's going to be my progress pick. Sunday mornings, I'm going to weigh myself. I'm going to go work out. Again, I want to see how I look out, look when I'm done working out. And people are like, well, you're going to have a flex. If I take a picture every single time after my Sunday morning workout, I'm still going to see progress because every single pick is then flex. I actually take one prior and then after. So I take me just standing there and then I take one with me actually flexing. I think that is crucial because you can kind of see if you got muscle development. That's the third thing from 75 hard. The fourth thing, you got to drink a gallon of water every single day. I've read a lot of different studies and a gallon of water every day is not the universal thing for everybody. Is it healthy? Yeah, it's fine. You could do that. Is it maintainable? Probably not. So something that I've been doing and I pretty much feel the same benefits is whatever your weight is, you cut that in half and that's how many ounces of water you should be drinking a day. So I weigh about 205 pounds right now, so I should be drinking in like 103 uh, ounces of water every single day. That's a little bit doable or more doable and feasible. You definitely need to have a water goal. I would set yourself up for that though, figure out what your weight is, cut it in half and then drink as many ounces as that. And I hacked to that. I got two, um, I think 50, like ounces or 1.5 liters or whatever uh, water bottles that I know if I drink two of those, I'm golden. I, I, I'm solid for the day. So I would find a water bottle that maybe you have to fill it up twice. If you want to do it once, you could do it once, but find something that you know that when there's an empty, once it, once it goes all the way down, you're done. A gallon is a lot of water, especially if you never drank a lot of water. So again, that's my take on the gallon or the water part of the 75 hard. The next part is you got to read 10 pages every single day. Um, this one I'm gonna keep. Honestly, I think this is good, especially if you've never read. Uh, if you're not into, if you're not someone who's into personal development or reading, um, ten pages is very doable. Uh, my my suggestion on this is find a a, a time that you want to read. Um, and if you never read before, you got to find out when your mind is most receptive to reading. For instance, if you wake up in the morning and your mind is going 100 miles per hour of thinking of all the things you have to do during the day, reading might not be the best time in the morning. It might be in the afternoon, it might be during your lunch, it might be right before you go to bed. Find out what time you're most receptive and then read your 10 pages. So my take on the 30 day full send when it comes to the nutrition and fitness part. So 75 hard says follow a diet with no cheat meals. I'm following a diet that includes a cheat meal and I think you should do the same thing but you better stick to it. If you says your cheat meals on Friday night and you go out on uh, Thursday night with some friends and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna switch. No, 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 if your cheat meal is on Friday, you tell your friends, hey, I can't, and then you, you, uh, you know, 
live live it up on Friday. You got to stick to what you say, but I think you need to incorporate a cheat meal. Um, as for the two 45 minute workouts, follow find a, a workout plan and stick to it. Figure out how many days you want to work out a week. Figure out what days it is, and then try to stick to those days. If you do not stick to those days, you better stick to the amount of workouts you are supposed to be doing that week. Um, progress pick. I'm going to say take a progress pick once a week and then weigh in every single day and average yourself on the same day you take a progress pick. A uh, gallon of water, figure out how much water of half your body in ounces, drink that a day, and then read 10 pages. Find, obviously, a book that you are interested in. I would find a book that you're trying to improve on, whether it be communication, whether it be relationships, spiritual, uh, business, whatever. Find a book like that and then start reading on that. One thing I am also going to incorporate and add to this, and I would encourage you to do too, uh, set a step count goal. Um, the reason why is because, like I said in my previous video, I saw a lot of uh, progress when it came to fat loss, when it, when my step in, step count increased for the day. So I think what my step count is, again, 20,000, I've done it before, and I think I'm gonna do it, especially since once I get back to work and I'll be walking around a little bit more, I think I'm setting mine, it's not finalized, I'm gonna finalize it by the time this video comes out on January 1st, but I think I'm going to be shooting for 20K steps a day. Now, if you've never done 10,000 10, steps a day, don't set 20K. Do 10,000 steps a day and stick to that. This is another thing with the step count. If you have a day that you're like, man, I, I just didn't get any steps in today. You didn't fail. You don't have to reset the challenge. But if, you, if your goal is 10,000 steps a day, you got to hit 70,000 steps a week. Which means if you got no steps on Monday, you better get a lot of steps in on Tuesday to try to and balance that. That's how I do it. Again, I'm looking at week-long things. And then I'm even looking at... Uh, month long things. Um, once we do the step count, now what I'm doing is I'm going to kind of incorporate because these ones I've pretty much done so I don't think it's going to be too difficult for me. If these ones are difficult for you and you think hey this is a lot then just keep it with that. Just, just stick with what we said. That's going to be the 30, full, 30 day full send. So pick a diet, pick, pick a diet and stick to it. Pick a workout, stick to it. Take a uh, progress pick once a week. Weigh yourself every single day. Half your body weight in ounces of water every single day, read 10 pages of a book every single day, and then set a step count and stick to it. Now, what you just did, if you actually followed all those steps, you just created your own 30-day full send. It's not mine, it's not Andy Fraselli's, it's not Jocko Willicks, it's none of these great people out there that are creating these, these amazing uh, challenges. You did it, so you took ownership of it. So these are all your goals. You thought it through and now you should be able to hit these. And I think, and I see this with my students, when you take ownership of something, your results drastically and change, drastically increase. So that's it. Now, if you want some extra credit, okay, I'm gonna add some extra credit to mine because these are things I wanna work on every single day. Um, I got the step count. What I'm gonna do is now I'm looking at my list of goals and I'm gonna kind of start pulling from those. The one I really wanna obviously work on is spiritual and relationship. So I pulled three goals from that section and I added them on of stuff I could do every single day again just add habits so like for instance with me I'd like to start praying every single morning and praying every single night I'd like to read to Adeline every single night and I got one more again I'm not going to go into all the details and everything but certain things that you want to you could possibly incorporate every single day into it and what I'm going to do is this whiteboard right back here I'm going to actually write all these down and as I go through my day, you could do a notepad on your phone. Um, I would check them off. There's something uh, psychological when you check off something you do on a day, a daily basis, you start feeling good about yourself. So I'm going to put mine right up there because every time I leave this room, I'll see it. And then I'm going to put a check on it. So if I you know, followed my diet for the day, check. If I did my workout, check. If I weighed in, check. If I drank my water, check. If I read my 10 pages, check. If I hit my steps, check. And then the next day, reset it and just track it. This is again geared towards your 30 day full send. Once you have all your daily tasks and all that stuff, you should have a certain number that if you add them up by the end of the month, you should hit all of them. And the reason why you gotta track it is if my goal is to work out six days a week, then technically I should only have one, two, three, four, five. I should have only five, mon five days off. Now. If at the end of the month, I hit my 26 workouts, then I'm golden. 
But if I'm coming to the end of the month and I'm like, dude, I don't think I'm gonna hit my 26 workouts, I might have to do two days for that remainder of the week or something to hit it. If I didn't hit my step count of 20,000 times 31, that's like 610,000 steps or something, I think. I might That might be terrible math. Don't quote me on that. Once I get my overall step count, if I'm getting close to the end of the week and I'm like, dude, I'm off by 100,000, I better go start running. I better start stepping. And the reason why you do that is because then you got this, it sets you up that you have this mindset that I have a goal and I'm going to stick to it. Hell or high water, I'm going to stick to it. However, if at the in, in the grand scheme of things, not a day thing, not a 30 day thing, in the grand scheme of things, this is a 30 day challenge. If you have a couple bad days in there, but at the end of the 30 days, when that last week came around and you were looking and you're like, dude, I'm not gonna hit this deadline. What happens with 75 hard is there's no, oh, I'm not gonna hit this uh, deadline. Let me see if I could flip a switch, lock in and finish strong. You don't have that with 75 hard. You miss a day, boom, you're done. Now you have to go all the way back to the beginning. And it kind of messes you up psychologically. You will see what your willpower is if on the last week you're looking at it and you're in a time crunch and you're like, dude, I'm not, I'm not gonna hit this. I gotta, I gotta go all out. And then you put pedal to the metal and you try to get in your step count. You try to get in your workouts. You try to get in whatever it may be. Even if you don't get it, you're gonna look back and be like, dude, I really pushed myself this week. And it's gonna start instilling that in you and building that willpower muscle. Which at the end of the day, again, this is about developing habits that you want to tell people I'm doing for the entire 24, 2024. Not, I did it. I, I completed the challenge, I'm done. Now I'm going back to whatever. No, no, these are all things that you're trying to instill. And where I found the, the the most success it comes or that I've had when it comes to setting goals and achieving them is having a, a deadline, having a, a strict goal that you're going to stick to. But a lot of people are like, your goals are black and white. And I used to be like that. And I've read a lot of books that say it's black or white. However, I don't agree with that. Doing this for so long, I don't think that there's a black or white. I think there is a gray area. And I think that gray area is able to, when you look at the grand scheme of things, I mean, realistically, if you broke down and said, hey, I want to work out three days a week for the entire 2024. So there's 52 weeks in a year, right? So three times 52. That means you would have to work out 156 times a year, right? So if your first month, you don't hit that, but you know in the back of your head, hey, I only have to hit 156. You know what? I'm going to start I'm, next week. I'm going to hit three and I'm going to add one day. So I'm going to hit four. And if your grand scheme, it's, it's basically like living in the present, but focusing on the overall long-term goal and the long-term goals are going to come back from your actual 2024 list of everything you want to do in that year, which you should have done at the beginning of the video. You look at those and then you start taking it 30 days. Cause once this 30 day full send is done, all these habits that you just did, you're keeping them. You're, 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 nothing's changing. The only thing that might change is you might add on. Hey, you know what? I've done three days. I want to see if I could do four. Boom. You add on four days. Hey, I've done 10,000 steps. I'm going to see if I could do 12,000 steps. Hey, you know what? I think I'm going to, I'm going to train for something. Hey, you know what? I've, I've read every single, I've read the Bible every single night. I prayed every single day. I think I'm going to add this. And you just start building on it because you already built the foundation. And again, like when it comes to these, this grant, the whole list of 2024, I got different, different actual, like, um, I want to say almost like challenges on there. Like, again, I want to complete the four by 48. I want to complete a trifecta. I want to complete a deca trifecta. I, I want to try a, a, a high rocks, all those little things. Those things are on my list, but for the first, first 30 days, I want to, I want to get a full send. I want to build some habits and then I want to start game planning. Okay. Next month, this, what challenge I'm going to knock off. So a memory card filled up. I totally don't even know where I cut off. I was just going, but anyways, that basically wraps up how I break down this 2024 goals. Again, this is just the first 30 days. Um, this is something that I do constantly at the end of the month. I literally review what I, I did the past month, where I could improve, and then I start adding on it. Um, this is what I'm calling the 2024 full send. Um, so if you are down 
Um, comment below and say send it, say full send, say I'm in, whatever it is. Let me know that you're down for the challenge. And if you want, you can even list out what your goals are. Hey, I'm going to hit this amount of workouts a week. Hey, I'm going to hit, you know, follow this um, meal plan, whatever it is. Set, set, you know, maybe when you write it down and you put it out on the channel. Uh, obviously, there's an accountability to that too. Um, as for the updates on the website, the website should be up and running. Just got to test it, see how it works. Um, once this video drops. So if this video drops and you're curious to, uh, if you're interested in purchasing the, again, these are the exact same workout routines that I've done and used to complete the Spartan Sprint, Super, and Beast. Um, so the Sprint's going to be an eight-week uh, program, same eight-week program I, I did, which again includes a workout split, a running split, what days you're going to be running, uh, easy runs, long runs, all that stuff. My carb cycling, it's basically going to be what day, what my carb cycling looked like during that eight week period. What days were low, what days were high, did I have a cheat meal, all that stuff. Uh, and then it's going to have that tracker. I know a lot of you guys have been interested in that tracker and wanting the tracker where I track my daily steps, my average weight for the week, where you could just plug in that, um, and then calories burnt. All of that is going to be on there. And then there's going to be another sheet where you can actually track weekly how you're doing. So you can look back and be like, man, I didn't burn as many calories this week. That's why I didn't lose as much weight. So you'll be able to track all that. Now, as for the super and the beast, they're going to be the exact same thing, different workouts. Cause I didn't do the exact same workouts, but you're still going to get all the same aspects as the sprint. So the, the super, you're getting a 10 week uh, running and lifting program different than the sprint. Um, but you still get the carb cycling the tracker, all that stuff. The beast, since that one's obviously a bigger one, um, that was my 12-week training program that I used. So you'll get the training split, the running split, or the cardio split, whatever you want to call it, along with the carb cycling, the trackers, and all that stuff. And it's going to be very simple. It's going to be you literally add it to cart, purchase it, and then you can have access. Um, I'm hoping that it's going to be an actual Google Sheets where you can go in and edit it exactly how you want. You could put your own weight in, all that stuff, and you can track it every single week you go into the gym and you'll know exactly what you want to do. So if you are interested in that and the website is up and working, then I will put it in the link below and you can go ahead and do that. Let me know that you did. I appreciate all the support if you do end up doing that. Um, and then comment below if you guys want to see certain any video or any certain videos for the upcoming year that you guys would like me to track. But as of right now, the main one I'm training for right now is the Spartan Trifecta, which is going to take place January 27th and 28th. Um, last week I ran nine miles on Saturday. That's the longest I've ran in this entire training program since I've been sick. Uh, I felt good up until about mile seven. And then the voice of average was coming and knocking at my door and trying to take my soul. And he, he almost he almost got me, but I, I finished nine miles. Felt it the next day though. And that's where I'm kind of concerned because I'm going to be doing 13 miles on Saturday. And then the next day I got to do a six mile and a three mile. And as of Sunday, if I would have woke up Sunday and had to go do it, it would have been brutal. So I'm like four weeks out. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm basically about four weeks out from the trifecta. 2024, going to be a big year. Big things coming for the DBA mindset, DBA lifestyle. So again, guys, you already know I, I appreciate all your support. I appreciate all your feedback. I appreciate the comments. Uh, I really enjoy connecting with you guys. If you guys have any questions, like I said, comment below. I, I, I respond to every single one of you guys. That's right, that writes something, unless I don't understand it. I sometimes get, get comments that I'm like, I have no clue what that means, but I'll still ask and try to clarify it. But anyways, when you watch this video, it is January 1st, which means it is a new year. Make this year your best year yet. Go out there, clock in, embrace the suck, stay happy, stay healthy, and above all, don't be average. I will catch you guys in the next one, and let's have a great year.